Hey guys, welcome to the four poster. Yes, I have been up. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, half past four. But do you know what? I've been marketing all day long. I can't believe it's a glorious Saturday. The weather was amazing. Um, it, the vibe was good. Everything was on target. All Everything had been done. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a day off today. And then I just got down to some marketing. And that was it. Day gone. What a bore. I'm lying a bit, actually, because I did do a new artwork so I suppose I mean that's what eats the time up isn't it when when you start drawing or painting time becomes an irrelevance and you're taken to this zone where you know you just you're it, I mean it's a, a place of enlightenment a place where you are aware vaguely that you belong to planet earth but it's such a loose tie because really you're you're in some ethereal realm of existence and you you take flight your fantasy comes to the fore this is why i love being an artist i really do love it um so i did a, a new piece today which was based on a photograph that I'd done and manipulated previously. And I'd, t I'd used a picture, a photograph of somebody, I can't possibly name names, and uh, um, I'd sort of fused it photographically with some leopard spots. And he, it, it produced, you know, I, I love messing around with photog photography, I love it. Lots of double exposures and lots of, you know, weird stuff. I love doing all that. It's really exciting. I really like doing it actually in a dark room by hand, but we do things digitally now. I really so want a dark room. I think I may promise myself this this year because I've got a loo, you see, which is, um, it has no windows and a door. It's the only room in the penthouse that actually has a door. And it would be very easy for me to turn that into a dark room. There's running water. So I just need an enlarger. So I think I'm going to treat myself because I really like doing the old sort of surrealist photography thing, but actually on photosensitive paper. I think you can get really um, just carry, you know, carried away with the, the touchy feeliness of, of it all and do lots of experiments. I mean, a I, slightly different thing. I remember my dad had a photocopier and... Um, I was always experimenting with a photocopier. No, I didn't sit on it. I wasn't taking photos of my boobs. I think I did once, actually. But it was very squashed. It was like, rather like a pancake. <laughs> it was a bad angle. <laughs> but um, well, I remember doing one, actually, and it, it was uh, an ashtray. So I I turned the ashtray onto a piece of card, turned it upside down, and then I lay it on the photocopier and I took out the paper and then I photographed the ashtray, photocopied it. And then I got the photocopy and I painted a beautiful butterfly on it. And this was years ago. This was like 1978 or something, maybe 1980. It was, I was into the... I was, in, I was a bit of an eco-warrior way back then. You know, the punks were actually. The punks were. Certainly the alternative, you, you know, the post-punks, the crass people and all that, they definitely were. So, you know, I was sort of really intrigued by this ash and soot and nasty fag butts and the beauty of, of a butterfly. And I love gouache paint, so um, and that's really good because it's very opaque, so it's really good for, for painting over photographs. How exciting. I might do it again, actually. I could do it again with my scanner. So I have a scanner now. I also have a printer. So I've just invented in some... In, sorry, invested in some printing inks. So that's my evening sorted I'm going to try and get the old printer going um I don't I'm not sure if I've got any normal photography paper but I have got five sheets of silk yep very exciting I know can't wait um so anyway the the, the painting I did this morning was use I had this photograph and I'd been manipulating it and doing things with it and I, I'm going to paint it onto leather if anybody buys it I think it would work really well, either on PU leather or leather leather. Now, I'd say leather leather because PU leather, you can, it, can, um, it can be prone to being eaten by things like moths and bugs. 
And I had a brand new pair of Stella McCartney thigh length PU boots, which were eaten by the silverfish. <laughs> I was very upset, terribly upset. And I've just, one of my investment artworks similarly has been eaten by silverfish. They're terrible things, they really are. And when you live in a block, you know, it's quite likely that you have beasties. Now, talking of beasties, today's release, wonderful release, is Teddy. And Teddy is a beast. And he's, so he's taken from this photograph of somebody who I don't tell you his name. One of my lovers, darlings. One of my lovers with his jeans opened. And I've turned him into a bit of a, a sort of teddy bear come leopard. I was going to go more down the leopard, but it, it started, it, it was curious when I was doing his face and I thought, oh, he's starting to look like a cute teddy bear. So I changed his ears. And it's all about the ears when you're differentiating between animals. The ears have it. I mean, the nose quite often too, but definitely the ears. And I do a lot of rats and their ears are massive. But um, I've also tattooed a teddy bear, actually, and I, I, I quite like the way I tattooed the ears. Anyway, I, I was hand-drawing all of these. Um, I was actually using um, digital oil paints. So this one is now available either as a print, as is, or if you order it. What I'm doing now is I, I order the printed canvas with an outline of the design, and that means you get a, an exact copy and then I paint over it. And I use a mixture of oil paints, oil pastels. Now, if you use oil pastels over a printed image, you need to varnish, uh, sorry, not oil pastels, oil paints. You'll need to varnish it first because the oil paints will eat into the sub fabric and can destroy it at a later date. And you don't want that, especially if you're charging, you know, £10,000 for your artworks. Um, but... If you're using acrylics, you don't have to worry about that. So whatever you use, um, be careful. You can use see-through gesso over the canvas, right? Um, and then you apply your oil paints. Now, if I do something in oil paints, it's going to take a lot longer. You're talking about three months minimum before it dries. And I would probably want to send that in a crate rather than rolled up in a tube, just for protection purposes. It's really... You know, you can't be rolling up stuff that you've just spent £10,000 on. So it would be a crate. Um, acrylic, maybe roll up if if needs must. But, I mean, I think when you're ordering a proper painting, you should probably get it stretched in advance. It's just very expensive. But, you know, if you've got five or ten grand to spend on a painting, you're not going to worry about, you know, £500 to have it delivered. See what I mean? So, you know. Um, anyway, Teddy was Teddy's just lovely. I love him. I absolutely love him. So what I will do um, in, a, in a week or so, I'm just working on uh, some things now, a nude and some other bits. I've got some orders to do. And um, as soon as those are done, I will um, order in. I won't get a big one because, you know, oh, will I come I in? Mean, I could, I suppose. But no, I'll probably get a two two foot square um, image done on the canvas and then I can decorate it on top and the thing the reason you have to do that is because actually no print is going to be as beautiful as your handwork the what happens when things are digitized is they look they look digitized you don't get the depth of texture it's just not there and you because it's not there's no texture there there's like pretend texture so, you know, you want to add texture. But also the the highlights, the the were, you know, I'm not the first person to do this. There are masters of highlighting, if you look that up. And and they would take paintings that were ready painted and then the, or or printed and they would highlight over the top of them using various media and and it just brings the painting to life. So this is my um my sort of go-to production um uh, strategy 
Um, and they really do look fabulous. I mean, unfortunately, I can't put anything up at the moment because everything's sold and I've only just started my online gallery. So um, all of the stuff that I put up mostly, actually, historically, is, is already sold. I just don't have it. Um, I gave up being an artist for a bit. I was just totally dedicated to the music. Now I find I, I have room for both. There is room to be a musician and room to be a painter. Um, and probably because of AI, you know, I can do things much quicker than I ever could before. If I want to, you know, put in a, a two, two of my paintings and combine them and come up with something utterly fantastic, I can do that. And I don't have to sketch it all out. Do you see what I mean? So really the, the sort of groundwork, the basic sketching in, magnification, um, all of these things, the sort of boring bit, the technical side of being an artist, are now taken care of through digital tools that I use. And that's really exciting for me because it really means that I can, I can you know, devote the time to the really exciting bit, which, of course, is getting your mitts on the canvas and making it so that the viewer just wants to dive in and join in and become part of the ethereal space to suspend their belief that um, uh, to come with me, you know, to come with me for when I, when I was painting it. You know, I hope that's what people would see. They'd, they'd, they'd think, oh, I'm with her on this. I so, I so see Teddy and I see I want Teddy too <laughs> in, my, in the boudoir. Um, now I've put it. I've done a collection on my Saatchi, which is erotic. I've just started it. I'll add to it. I've got lots more. Um, but you know, it, it's taken me quite a while to do all this. I mean, all day really, apart from the actual painting this morning. Um, so you know, it takes. It does take a very long time to be organised. But I've. So I. I mean, most of my work is erotic. I would say that ninety percent of it is erotic, and and the rest is figurative. Um, those two things entwine. Of, of course they do, because erotica is humanity, isn't it? It's figurative, usually. Um, I mean, petals and stamens are very erotic. Of course they are. Um, and I, I've actually got quite a few of those I can put up. I did some previously. Um, so we've got loads, loads and loads of work, actually. I'm very excited to be collating everything, to be getting the catalogue up and running um you know it's been years really where I've got all these sort of different places where my art is funny enough I went to my I've got a friend who owns a bar bistro and she had some of my work up and um I went to collect it but she's she has three up there already and or four she bought one so I sold a Vivian Westwood painting that I'd done so I was pleased I was really pleased that that's gone to her and there are three there that are on loan and she's just going to let me know when she gets something else to put in their place and I'm a, I'm not in a rush but I did pick up four others that she had round the back that she'd taken down previously um and um they I mean they weren't framed particularly well but again you know you have to sort of at some point go around collecting all your stuff and and making sure that it's not letting you down. And it's like I said to my friend, I, I couldn't remember what was up there. Um, and looking at them yesterday, one of them had slipped, or both two had sort of slipped behind and they needed straightening up. And this is the thing, when you're not there in charge of your art, I mean, this these artworks were um, cheap prints, relatively cheap prints. They weren't expensive. You would never, ever, darlings, put or lend an expensive piece of your work. You just wouldn't do that because, you know, you'll end up with tomato sauce across it if there's a food, you know, if it's that sort of place. I and mean, people go to bars to get drunk. They don't go there to buy art. So, you know, I mean, they might buy something or something small on a whim if you're lucky. Um, I think I have actually, I did actually sell some animals to her once before. Um or lend her some rather, and I think they did sell. But anyway, I better go because I'm look. I'm running out of time. So pop along to artbysania.com because that's 
um, it's, it's quite exciting. I think it's really coming together now, that little website. And you can you can link up to all of my work on Saatchi, which is my sole distributor at this moment in time. 